Dear friends, greetings to you all in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. I want to share a few things about the topic of worship. When we talk about worship, lot, many people think about the music, the instruments, the lights, and all these things come into their mind. When they go with a good singing and good songs and what they tell is we had very good worship. But actually when we look at the word worship, the origins of that word, the word worship comes from worth-ship. So you are actually attributing the worth, the value, the greatness of a person. That's, that's the worthy, worthiness, if you will. That's worth-ship. That's how we got our word worship. So sometimes we don't even think about the the greatness of God when we sing songs we need to re really think about the the attributes of God how great our God is how awesome our God is when we think about those attributes you will you will worship him you will be amazed by his greatness in Matthew chapter 2 verse 2 if we look at it we see the wise men coming from the east why are they coming? They are coming here to worship Jesus. They saw the star. They saw the star in the sky and then they came here to worship this uh, newly born king. So they are they, they bow down their knee and then worship the king. So they are attributing the greatness and the majesty to this king. And again, when we look in John chapter 4, verse 24, we see the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. This is a very important point. Let me remind you. The true worshippers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. Unless we know the truth about God, unless we understand the truth about God, we might be even worshipping a false God. So we need to very be very careful in worshipping the God in spirit and in truth. So how can we worship in spirit? Unless we are born again, unless we are born by the Spirit, you cannot worship the God, worship God in the Spirit. That's very important. Uh, Nic uh, Jesus, uh, Nicodemus went to Jesus and Jesus told Nicodemus the same thing. Unless you are born by the Spirit, you cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Unless you are not born by the Spirit, you cannot worship God in the Spirit and in truth. Because the people will be walking in blindness, in darkness, Unless they come to the light of the word of God, unless they are born by the Spirit, they cannot see God. So when once they are born by the Spirit, that Spirit within you will try to call Abba Father and then uh, pray and worship God in the Spirit. And if we really continue to look at that verse, for the Father is seeking such people to worship Him. Actually, Father is looking for a people, true worshippers, and the true worshippers the Father is looking for is the attribute that He says here that He is the, the those who worship in spirit and in truth. These are the people Father is looking for. The true worshippers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth, for the Father is seeking such people. So this is how we need to worship God, to worship Him in truth and in spirit. And then if we look at uh, Acts chapter 17, verse 23, and here we see uh, Paul walking through this city. And for as I passed along, they observed the objects of your worship. I found also an altar with this inscription to the unknown God. What therefore you worship as unknown, this I proclaim to you. So there are people who, who worship gods without even knowing the God. So we cannot be like that. We cannot be like worshipping God without even understanding the meaning of the lyrics that we sing, without understanding the greatness of God. So we need to first understand the greatness of God. And also if we look at uh, Matthew 15, 8 and 9, it says, This people honors me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching as doctrines the commandments of men. So here what is what we are told is, People are worshipping God with their lips, but their heart is far from God. They don't even know, they have a clue how this God is. And many people think that they want God to make them happy. God is not interested in your happiness. God is more interested in your holiness. So if you understand the truth, God also will provide you the joy. So once you follow the true uh, meaning of life, what God is interested in, 
So God is more interested in uh, holiness rather than your happiness. Don't be fooled by those who try to excuse these sins. In other translations, it says empty words. For the anger of God will fall on all who disobey him. When we disobey God, when we ignore the prescription given by God, how to be saved, then what God says, the anger of God will fall upon them. So it, that is a very dangerous thing. And uh, we sometimes worship God with all kinds of songs without even understanding the meaning. And that's why I like some of these old hymns full of theology, full of the meaning, full of the, the worship of God. And we need to understand how great, oh God, you are, how awesome you are. So we need to really understand our God first before we worship him. So I, I think I hope this message helps us to check, understand our heart. Where am I standing? When I pray, when I stand singing, when I worship him, am I worshiping, understanding the greatness of God? Am I understanding, am I singing songs with a holy heart? Confessing all the known sins, going before God, Lord, search me and see if there is any wicked way in me. How can we sing songs with uh, having a sin, unconfessed sin in our hearts? We need to search our hearts when we go to our holy God. God is more interested in, uh, in holiness. He is sanctifying us. This is the process of sanctification. After justification, uh, sanctification, until glorification, we are being sanctified day by day, walking in His ways, walking in His Spirit. So unless you are born by the Spirit, you cannot worship Him in Spirit.